All right, I thought I'd do um, a diabetes update on how I'm going with this protein sort of diet. And uh, I'm not doing too bad. I, I'm definitely under 200 on my blood sugar levels. Um, the lowest I went was 113. I seem to be averaging between 150, 170. And when I hit 150, I'll tend to reward myself with like a can of peaches, a small can. And that'll bring me from 150 up to 180. And it's hard. It's really difficult. Two times, I, I guess you could say I fell off the wagon. Um, because one time here I went to 255. And another time I went to, I it was 220. And when I went to 255, um... What did I have when I did that? I think I went, I had like, I don't know, three ice cream sandwiches or something like that on top of my regular food I ate. So that was pretty interesting. I did find this stuff. Well, actually, I didn't. My wife did. And it's amazing. I'm allowed to have gravy again. And I'll put a picture of what it's called. I can't even pronounce the name and where you can get it off Amazon. It's fairly cheap and um, it doesn't take that much. Usually when you make gravy you use flour or you use cornstarch and flour or cornstarch is going to raise your blood sugar levels. So I, I wasn't able to have gravy. But with this stuff you can. Now the gravy's not it's a little bit lumpy. It's not it's you know as uh, like using flour or cornstarch but it's still nice to eat gravy again. So when you make a roast, say, in a crock pot, and you know, and you want to turn into gravy and have a nice gravy across your roast, you can with this stuff. And it really doesn't take that much. I mean, literally, you're just sprinkling a little bit in the food. You don't even got to put it in a hot water or anything like that. And then you mix it up, and it forms the gravy, which is really awesome. So that was a nice find. And uh, I bought one, and it's been last, I, we haven't even dented it. I mean, and I've ate gravy like, I don't know, a good 10 times during the month. So that stuff was amazing. Amazing the quest of trying to be diabetic free. I'm uh, diabetic free, I mean. I'm still not taking any insulin needles whatsoever. I'm strictly taking uh, metformin twice a day. And I take, you know, multivitamin and some other health pills, but not um, nothing else in the way of medicine. But, you know, there's been times I was 184, um, 189, you know, but I always end up going down, you know, 170, 160, 152, there was a couple times I was 113, and uh, I get excited when I see like 113 or 150, I know 150 I could be a bit lower. But I get excited. My weight is staying the same. It's like I've hit a plateau. I was like today I just weighed myself. I was 235. 235.2. I seem to fluctuate between like 230, 232, 235. I seem to be hanging in there. I'm not going any higher. Not really. That's where I'm going. I did find, and this is really cool, I did find a channel where this um, very large man, very obese, I think he said he weighed around six or seven hundred pounds. I can't remember when he started, but he went on a water fast diet. I'll have his link in the bottom. And I've been watching him, and I'm amazed. I really am. He literally, for the last 120 days or a little bit more, all he's done is drink water with electrical lights in it or something like that. Electric lights, however you say that. All he's done is drink water. And I remember seeing some woman in the comment section saying she was 124 pounds and she drank strictly water and she damaged her kidneys. And I just went, wow. And he explained it to her. He says, hey, that's, you're pretty low at 124. He says, you look at me, I'm quite large. And he literally dropped over 200 pounds. I mean, he went from that 600 down to 400. I think he's 382 now or something. And uh, some of the milestones that he was really enjoying from when I was watching his videos was being able to put a seatbelt on, being able to fit inside the MRI machines. I mean, that's amazing. 
But how does this help a diabetic? Well, I'm stuck at 235, it seems. And I'm not going to do anything extreme as him, but it looks like if you can pull it off, it looks like, you know, you don't eat for two days, but maybe eat a little bit, you know, just to keep your blood sugar levels where they're supposed to be. It looks like maybe that weight will come down a little bit more. And, of course, more exercise would help. But um, it is pretty amazing what's happening to him. And uh, like I said, I'll put a link at the bottom if you want to go check it out. I thought for sure that I've heard stories, you know, human beings would, you know, you're good to live for three to four weeks as long as you got water and no food. And these are basically what I've seen on the Internet. Well, if you're large and you got the fat content, I mean, this guy's already gone 120 days. I mean, what is that, four months, four and a half months he's already gone? Without food? That's a heck of a lot of discipline. You know. And uh, he's taken off the weight pretty quick. I think he should have went a little slower on it. But it shows you that a human being, if they've got the fat content, they can live quite a long time without food. It's pretty amazing. And it was interesting because, I mean, I used to watch a lot of videos on bug out bags and get home bags and you know, in case SHTF and, you know, everybody was putting bars and mountain houses in their packs and everything. And really, if you designed a get-home bag and you figured one week to get home, you really probably don't even need that much food. You know, maybe one or two packs, maybe a couple bars. It looks like you're more concentrating on water than you are actual food. I'm sure you're going to be tired and wore out and stuff if you're walking a long ways, but... I mean, he's working a job and going 120 days with just water. That's pretty amazing. But this is working with the diabetes for you guys that are keeping track of it. And um, I noticed, I've seen a couple other people, and I know, for, I know them. Like, I, I've talked to them before, and they're diabetic. And they're making videos on YouTube, and I'm seeing a whole bunch of recipes of macaroni. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Macaroni and rice, macaroni and rice. And I'm just looking at that and I'm just going, you're not even taking your diabetes serious. Like a diabetic cannot eat macaroni. They cannot eat rice. And um, I know that for a fact. Like it's, I love uh, craft dinner and hamburger. I love that stuff mixed together. I know it's a poor man's meal, but I love it. And I even throw two packets of uh, craft dinner in there. Well, it's been almost a year since I've had any form of macaroni, potatoes, rice, anything like that. And when my blood sugar hit like 115, 118, I think it was, I thought, wow, I'm really going to take a chance on this. So I went and had one box of Kraft Dinner mixed with some hamburger and double cheeses. And boy, did that taste good. Oh, that tasted so good. And um, I could feel my blood sugar rising. Oh, I could feel it. And when I, when I finally went and checked, I was 180. So I literally went from, you know, that 115 to 180, which is, what, a 50, 60 jump? And uh, I felt it. But boy, was it good. You, you can't eat macaroni, rice, anything like that if you're a diabetic. I mean, it's got carbs. Carbs are death. And that's all there is to it. But it's not saying you can't eat something. And, and that's the thing. I mean... If I probably would have ate that macaroni and cheese, I don't know, if I would have ate that probably in a smaller portion, probably wouldn't have been so hard on me. But it's been over a year since I had anything like that. Mostly what I do for a treat is when my blood sugar gets down to 150 or so, I'll have an ice cream cone, and it's usually about two scoops of ice cream. That doesn't raise me too much. Um, or one ice cream sandwich. Can of pears, can of peaches, can of fruit cocktail, you know, small cans. Um, I'll, have, I'll have some of those as a treat. It's fruit, but yes, it's good. And I'll try to get in, in light syrup, not heavy syrup. You know, I'll try to cut everywhere I can. Today I had uh, roast beef sandwiches with tomato and cheese, and it was brick cheese, not sliced cheese. From what I've read and seen, Sliced cheese or the sprinkled cheese is full of plastic. Apparently, it's not even really cheese. 
when you get the brick cheese you're getting the better cheese so buy brick so I cut the slices off that and put it on now the bread I bought was strictly it was it was pretty expensive it was like I don't know four bucks for a loaf and the loaf was smaller but it had very little sugar content and carbohydrates when we looked at it it, it was something like I don't know seven percent it was low so I had two three three sandwiches of roast beef and my blood sugar did jump above 40 but nowhere near I wasn't even near 200 so I was okay to eat that but it's not something if my blood sugar is 170 I can eat so again my blood sugar dictates what I can eat uh, pork chops steak eggs just pure protein is what our vegetables to go with it and uh, I probably eat more vegetable than I do meat like for example on a steak I only eat on a full steak now I only eat half a steak I can't eat a whole thing so my stomach has shrunk and I'll eat half a steak and probably my plate is three quarters vegetables whether it be block uh, broccoli cauliflower you know whatever it is that way and I don't use any a1 sauce I don't use any ketchup nothing like that whatsoever I was using a1 sauce before but I noticed my blood sugar was going a bit too high so I had to lay off the A1. Now it's just a matter of uh, spicing it up with different spices because that doesn't mess with it. But it's going really good. It's going really good, actually. I um, I was able to turn my garden over, I don't know, four times so far. I've turned it over with the rototiller, which would wear me out before. I went and took um, four walks now. Each walk was about three miles with my 50-pound backpack on and I was a little tired my muscles were a little sore but I was able to do it so I'm looking forward to going out probably maybe this week is what I'm looking forward to we're getting in the high 80s here in Tennessee so that should be interesting and I'm doing it a little bit at a time being I have this under control now with just metformin um, metformin can just go in my pack and you know I don't have to worry about my insulin spoiling or anything but when I look at my blood sugar and I'm using this uh, calendar thing every time I take my um, metformin now when I take my metformin I don't go strictly by every 12 hours because what I noticed was let's say I take it at midnight I don't take it at 12 o'clock noon the next day I usually try to take it at 11 o'clock or even two hours before because I notice by the time the 12 hours comes up the metformin is completely out of my system and when I get down to the last hour last hour and a half it's pretty much starting to leave then because that's when my blood sugar rises and I did do another test I tried not taking metformin for a period of 24 hours and um, really staying very strict to what I ate and I didn't eat very much so I ate like a, maybe a quarter of a steak with some vegetables and I really stayed and I stayed at like 200 190 it wasn't going in down at all 200 seems where it was so I need that metformin to bring me down. I did play a test on that. Now, maybe if I lose another 30 pounds, I won't. I don't know until I get there. And it's a battle. I'm really trying. But, what, like I said, when I keep track of all this, you know, like, um, I see a high one here, 255. I think that was the ice cream sandwiches. I eat too many of them. And, uh, but on average, like over here, I got 102 is what my blood sugar was at I got one at 109 162 so and on the first I go in to see my doctor and um, do my uh, blood test and find out what the average is I'm guessing my average is going to be 170 that's what I'm guessing but I'm not 100% sure yet we'll, um, we'll have to see with that but it's going pretty good it really is and if you're a diabetic, don't eat macaroni, don't eat potatoes, don't eat rice. Oh, my God, that's suicide. You're just going to get your feet cut off. I mean, you're, you're going to have a lot of bad things happen to you. And don't even think, oh, I'll just take more insulin. That, that, it's killing you. I mean, it's bad enough i got to take metformin, but the, the less you have to take, the healthier it is for you. And I'll tell you, once you start eating protein, which is, you know, that type of diet, you're going to find you're going to lose weight. And there's days where 
I, believe it or not, you think if you ate steak every single day, you'd never get sick of it, and that's not true. I mean, you do get sick of steak when you're eating protein. And even when you start eating chicken, like you eat chicken every day and you're trying to make it every different way and add different spices, you do get to a point where you're not even looking forward to a meal. That happens also. But that's a good thing because you're not eating as much. But when that happens, you can't just stop eating or your blood sugar is going to bottom out. So you really got to keep a close eye on it and, um, you know, see what's going on. But I'm getting to the point now where my blood sugars are getting low to where I can reward myself with like a can of peaches or something. But you can't overdo it. You know, like I didn't have three ice cream sandwiches. I mean, I should have had one. But I haven't had those in a year. You know, so it's kind of crazy. You taste one and you go, oh my God, this tastes so good. You know, and, and that's, that's the scary part. It's You really got to be disciplined when you're a diabetic on what you're going to eat and what dictates to you. Now, one thing I've done is, um, and it's coming in on Monday, I picked myself up a uh, propane stove. And I'm making a kit. I'm literally making this kit to put in my truck. See, when I go places, I can't eat at a lot of the, I can't eat at McDonald's, I can't eat at Burger King, I can't eat at any of these places. But I don't want to be a hinder to the wife or whoever I'm out with, you know, they should be able to eat what they want. So maybe they could go in the a Chinese restaurant and get what they want and I'll just drop the tailgate, throw the uh, stove on the back and cook myself a meal, put some food in a, in a what do you call it, a cooler and I'll be good to go. So now I know what's in the food and that just seems like a better thing. So I'm going to make a kit where I put this whole thing together because there are places I go to that I want to go camping to and stuff and you know or even just to go out for the day and take pictures and video. And when I go to these places, there ain't nothing around but a, a McDonald's. You can't eat there. I mean, it'll kill you. So, I mean, if I make up this kit of a stove and everything and put it all together, if I get hungry in the day, I can just pull off to the side of the road or a picnic stand or something and put up the stove, cook myself a meal, and hey, we're good to go. And uh, that's kind of what I got in mind now, so that way I can get away from the house more instead of being so tied, tied in, is what I'm working on. And give me more exercise to help me, you know, get that extra 30 pounds down. So there's an update on my diabetes. Sorry for it being so long. Um, but I'll keep updating every now and then for the diabetic that happens to find these videos, and maybe it'll help them. And like I said, go check out my playlist. It tells you step by step how I'm doing this and what's going on. I used to be 255 or so in weight. And so I've gone down, but I'm hanging at 235, 230 in between there. And I'm still 55 years old. I haven't turned 56 yet. So other than that, I'll keep you updated. And if you haven't, pick yourself up one of these uh, calendar things because this is where I record my diabetes which comes in handy and uh, everything's going good so if you're diabetic do not eat macaroni rice po potatoes they say you can eat sweet potatoes sweet potatoes and I even did a test on that and you can't eat southern sweet potatoes I go any place in the Tennessee here and eat sweet potatoes they just lace it with brown sugar you can't do that but you can eat probably one sweet potato because the one day I did test that and, you know, I had four sweet potatoes because they all oh, sweet potatoes are good for you. And they are good for you, but not so much for a diabetic. They, it is lower in carbs than a white potato. But if I'm at 200, no, I shouldn't eat a sweet potato. But if I'm at 150, yeah, I could probably have one sweet potato, half a sweet potato, you know, and play around with that idea. So, give you an idea. Anyhow... I'm getting rambling here. Sorry about that. Um, sub up, and I'll keep updating how this diabetes goes. Whether or not I get rid of this 35 pounds or so over the next over the summer should be interesting. Or do I just hang the same way? I'm going to be doing uh, a lot of backpacking. I'm going to be going out doing some camping, and uh, with me and my dog. So hopefully that will help add some exercise into the mix here, and we'll see how that goes. But all the links will be in the bottom for that stuff to make gravy if you want. And you want to go check out that other guy's channel. I thought that was pretty amazing what he's doing. I'm keeping a close eye on him because I'm kind of thinking how can I, you know, use that in with what I'm doing. 
because I'm thinking maybe I could just drink water for two days, then eat a meal, drink water two days, then eat a meal, and maybe I'll take myself off that plateau. Could I be disciplined to go two days without food? That should be quite interesting. All right, so about, give me a like, give me a comment, whatever, and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Catch you later.